All right, guys, I took one for the team. If you watched my previous video on the uh, the update vlog for the uh, Honda CRV situation, uh, you'll know that I'm doing my um, CB axle on my 2001 Honda CRV on the passenger side, and there's the big debate about the whole OEM uh, to aftermarket to Napa axle debate, and there's truth to it. I took one for the team. I'll show you what's up. So here's the lowdown. I've got a piston ring, OEM, new axle. It's not a reman, as you can see here. And I've got this Napa axle. The new one, I had it installed, took it for a boot, made one hell of a noise, it popped out. And I uh, confirmed that by pulling over to the side of the road, sticking my hand up inside there, and there was uh, a definite inch and a half of space where it had popped out in between here. So inch and a half between here and the transmission case. So it popped out, uh, came back, limped it home, and then uh, got her back in here, took it apart, went to the next town over, got the Napa one, because they were now open. Uh, that was my reason of also getting the piston ring one as well, because they were right across the street from me. So I got my Napa one, I'm about to put it in there. So I took the time now to measure everything and what I've got here is this measurement system here. It's pretty crude, but it works. So I've got the baseline. This line here is the outboard shaft without the nut on there. When I measured it, everything was squared up. And what we got here for the piston ring is 25 inch on the compression. So when everything is compressed in, because this shaft slides in and out, that's how the CV works. Uh, on the on the extension, it was 25.75 inches. So when this is fully extended, say you're going over a bump, rock, terrain, whatever, your one side droops down because it's free wheeling in the air. On the Napa one, we have a 26 inch on the compression. So when everything's again, fully compressed in. And then on the extension, uh, 27.25 inches on the extension again, when everything is fully extended. Also noted is the shaft Size here is one inch, and on here we have about inch and an eighth. So it's a lot thicker as well, I've noticed, on the Napa one. And this one's heavy, but this one's hefty. This one has a definite couple pounds more of heft and weight compared to this one. My only uh, complaint, I'd say, is the design in the boots. What you want to see typically is uh, more boot ribs like this one does like the uh, piston ring ones uh, compared to this one because you have more flex I've noticed in my years as a mechanic you have more flex less of a chance of these uh, ripping not saying these are bad but that's what I would see is uh, I'd like to see is uh, more of a, an extra rib or two in here same thing on this side here overall everything else is pretty damn solid on this Napa axle and uh, yeah that's pretty much all I gotta say about that it, it the whole Napa OEM axle debate is the true legit thing. This is a new Napa axle OEM, not one of the reman ones. And the part number on that as well for the passenger side, I'll show you here, is 946050. And uh, I'm not too sure about pricing in the States, but pricing here in Canada, it was about, uh, I think it was $176 or so for this. And for the aftermarket, other one was 154. So spend the extra couple bucks, get yourself the Napa one, and uh, save yourself the hassle of these things popping out. Especially if you're lifted. If you're lifted, you need to get the ones that have more extension. So with that being said, I hope that helps somebody out there. Kind of finally put the whole Napa OEM aftermarket axle debate to bed. Uh, there is definitely a difference. I highly recommend you go with the Napa one, no matter what. Like everybody says. You know, there's truth to it. Go with an Apple one. Hope this helps somebody out there. Till next time, cheers. Have a good one. Don't forget to check the video up here, the video down here. And if you like what you're seeing, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below.